Hey guys, Gokunath here, back with another video. It's my Hackintosh build. Let's see what it takes to build a Hackintosh on Jan 2016. It's a $1000 Skylake build. It's gonna be basically a productivity that is a performance machine for the video editors and content creators. So where they will be using the programs like Adobe Premiere, After Effects and Sony Vegas etc etc etc. These programs gonna take the advantage of this machine and turn it into productivity which is the powerful GPU and powerful processor. Let's get started. So let's start from the basics. What is meant by a Hackintosh? It's basically running a Apple OS that is a Mac OS X on the PC which you built. So that's a Hackintosh. So if that is a Mac Pro, then why people are building the Hackintosh? So Mac Pro basically costs somewhere between $2,000. I don't know exact pricing, but I'm just telling it as average. Yeah, $2,000 to nearly $10,000. So it's available in a lot of flavors that is a customizability options. But a Hackintosh is a computer which you are building and it comes in your taste. It's Hackintosh performs a much more or similar in performance to a Mac Pro but in half of its price. So that's why people are going towards a Hackintosh nowadays. Do remember one thing. By building a Hackintosh, you won't get any Apple support because you are building a Hackintosh. I also have the PC part picker list link in the description below. Do check it out guys. For the processor, I chose Core i5-6600. It runs on 3.5GHz, it has 4 cores and 4 threads. So it, it it's helpful for the all the video editing, it's one heck of a beast. It's just $20 more from the Core i5-6500. When it comes to video editing, clock speed and cycles per minute, I everything counts. So this helps a lot. We are going to stick with the stock cooler because we are go not going to overclock anything. It has no Intel hyper threading, so it's kind of uh, annoying but it's okay. Well, considering the performance to this price point. For the motherboard, I chose the Gigabyte Z170 UD3H. So it's kind of an overkill for this motherboard. It's a ATX form factor where you, ha you have the Z97 chipset on it. It supports the DDR4 RAM. It has four DDR DIMM slots where under plenty of status exports and PCIe ports where you can throw a red card or a PCIe card. Uh, that is a graphic card or you can run it in SLI or Crossfire so it supports everything so it's kind of overkill but at the same time for its price one it's best and future proof too moving on to the RAM the Corsair Vengeance LPX 16GB 2.8GB sticks so that it's a DDR4 RAM it runs on 3000 megahertz so again a high frequency and high performance where 16GB is enough for now yeah, well these programs like uh, Adobe After Effects, they are going to be get advantage where more RAM equal to more performance. Well, for storage, I went with the two options as usual where I chose the SSD and hard disk. Where I, I chose the Samsung EVO series where a Pro series SSD. It's a 250GB uh, SSD where it, it's helpful for dual booting both Windows 10 as well as the Mac OS X. So it has plenty of room in it and also for other programs to get in. And for the storage option, I chose the Seagate Barracuda 1TB hard disk. Where it has 64 MB of cache and it spins on sound to double zero RPM where you will be getting the good read and write speeds. Uh, also, for its cheapest for its price point. Not the cheapest, but best bang for the buck. Graphic cards for this productivity type of build where it should have a CUDA course. So I went with the NVIDIA side. It's ASUS GeForce GTX 970 and Strix edition where it has whopping 4 gigabytes of VRAM and it has CUDA cores and it has TDP of 145 watts. It supports G-Sync where it's uh, helpful for the multiple model setup and it helps to share the workload between the CPUs uh, during the rendering time so you will be rendering the video a lot faster. Moving on to the power supply, powering all this is a Corsair CX500. Uh, it's a semi-modular power supply so semi-modular helps to keep help to manage the cable management neatly it has 80 plus bronze efficient and the uh, Corsair makes a very good pause i didn't go and overkill for this uh, power supply but again even though it's a 500 watts it packs a pretty much punch where it's even supposed a 2 sli crossfire configuration in future and again you can uh, swap out the grams and upgrade it to that 32 gigs in near future i chose the case nzx 340 it's a black edition again it's a modular power case where you can't model anything this uh, you can't take the hardware base and you can't throw it in uh, so it has front uh, 
USB 3 headers and also front vents and dust filters and also top vents and dust filters that's all guys so what do you guys think do let me know in the comments below like if you'd like it dislike it if you dislike it as always don't forget to subscribe